Okay, so the, the theme for, by the way, I know there was a lot of interest in this last week. It's, it's empty right now. Good um, things go fast. The theme for this week, I'm just going to move the microphone here, is um, peer learning. And uh, I'm sitting here with Champika Fernando, who's a um, researcher in the Lifelong Kindergarten group at the Media Lab. And she's been studying peer learning in the Scratch online community. And uh, one of the reasons why we're looking a little bit ridiculous here with our hoods on, I think... It, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I put the hood on because Philip suggested we put the hood on right before this so, started. So, I, well, I think I'm it, looking forward to finding out. Well, so let's take, we'll take the hood off. But uh, I, I think there is a message in, in the hood, actually, that is... Um, connected to identity, both identity, individual identity, but also group identity. And um, there, there is a link to peer learning, but maybe we, we'll, we'll, we'll try to kind of have a little conversation mm -hmm. about scratch peer learning and then circle back. I'll try to Should circle us back okay. to the to You'll the try hoodies. and come up with something. In the meantime, in the meantime I'll, I'll try to yeah. think of something. Okay. Anyway, so I, I know you've been working on, on peer learning in the scratch community. Do you want to maybe give a little, just a little background to this? Sure. So... I became interested in this idea of peer learning within the Scratch community when I saw that. So the Scratch community already has ways where kids are like interacting with each other. You can remix other people's projects mm -hmm. and that's like an opportunity to learn from what someone else has done. You can comment on someone's project to give them feedback on what they've done. Um, but something that I noticed that was happening within the community was there were lots of Scratchers who have sort of spent a lot of time in Scratch and even some new Scratchers who were creating these tutorial projects and creating these like gallery spaces of projects where they were trying to help other scratchers get started and learn something that they were already very good at mm -hmm. or that they thought they were good at. Um, and, and that I thought was really interesting. There was like a excess of motivation for doing so like they would create these spaces and say, this is like a helper space and there'd be an excess of people volunteering hmm. to help, but not as many people coming there to get help. And I didn't think that was because people didn't need help. I think it was just the way that they were going about doing it wasn't quite right. And it was, it's, I, I think it was like a, a, a lack of connection between the people who could help and the people who needed help. And then also it's really difficult actually to help someone. I, I mean, it's not the same, like, so Stack Overflow is an example of where it's like a question answer site, which is not quite the same as like, I'm stuck on a problem, like, you know, the right, the thing that will help me is not necessarily like giving me the answer, but sort of like helping me think through the problem. Or maybe I don't even actually know what my question <laughs> exactly, is. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's like an even bigger problem is like, how do you, I think a lot of uh, scratchers are struggling and don't know how to frame their problem. So we also have discussion forums and a forum where you can go in and ask your question. But a lot of the time there's like a lot of back and forth in terms of just trying to figure out what the problem actually is. And then it often trails off and you don't have a good sense of whether that person got mm -hmm. helped or not. And so what are some of the changes or features that you're building that will make it easier for people to both find the right person to talk to, but then also to have that conversation? Yeah. So I think there are very sort of like nuanced things, but like one of the, one of the things I'm trying to help with is like better channels of communication for expressing like, uh, what your problem is and then also or, or that you actually need help with a project mm -hmm. and then also um ways for people who are helping to better express like what it is you should as opposed to so like right now basically you know i could go into discussion forum and say hey i need help with this thing and then try and describe my problem and then someone else could describe and text the solution and so instead of that um some of the things that we're trying to do are like within a project you're struggling with something, you can mark it as like a draft project or a project that needs help. And then it sort of like becomes visible to other scratchers who might be able to help. And then they can come to that actual project, whereas like you're in this in their space now helping them on their project. And instead of just using text to comment, you can use things like actual code snippets that you can pass back and forth and mm -hmm. try out. Um, and, then, and then also this idea of like within the comments allowing uh, project owners to sort of like frame questions that people can respond to. So it's sort of like the idea of like what happens with Stack Overflow, but it happens like within the project um, and the, it's sort of like driven by the owner. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's like very contextual. And uh, one of the big questions in peer learning is always, um, well, so if you're the person with the question, it's pretty clear, you, you know, you're getting help or support or guidance or mentoring. Like it's clearly pretty clear that there's benefit flowing yeah. towards you. But often people are asking about, well, what's the benefit to the person helping? Do you have any thoughts yeah. on that? I think so. I think that's one of the ways that the Scratch community might actually be kind of unique. Like mm -hmm. it's one of the communities where, or I, or, and that was sort of like what drew me to this is there just seems to be this excess of like desire to, to share what you know and help. And I think we were talking about this a while ago, with some of the other people in the group and one of that, like, we don't, we don't have a good sense of exactly why and what makes it different. But one idea was like, you know, they're, they're kids and they're younger and maybe they have more time and it's like a way to feel, uh, it's this sort of like, uh, pride in sort of like helping mm -hmm. someone else out. And it's a, it's like a identity thing. Like I'm a helper and I can like, uh, I can, I'm good at something and I can show you how to do it. And so it, it just, I, I do think that that's one thing that seems to be unique in the scratch community is there's an excess of people like offering to help and less people asking for help. Um, so, and so I think this, the challenge is trying to help people who need help, get that help and ask and connect with the people who, who actually mm -hmm. can help them. Mm -hmm. And then, and then in, in the same sort of vein, like giving the people who can help better tools to mm -hmm. help. So the, the one thing where maybe I would, um, I have a slightly different, uh, uh, impression or at least uh, in my like studying open source software communities or online communities I think the willingness the generosity the willingness to help other people is very strong across most of those communities so that's okay. I think the good news yeah. and where I think we're coming back to the hoodies is actually you know you were saying that in the scratch community there's this identity of being a helper like and that's something that people aspire to mm -hmm. and for me the hoodies right in a way it's like if you can have signals, you know, like wearing the hoodie is a signal. Yeah. If you want to be part of my crew, yeah. you put on a hoodie, you wear, you know. And so if you can create those signals around, yeah. like, hey, in this community, it's cool to be a helper. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, so actually one of the, the other things that we're talking about, there's like a, a subgroup of us that's working on this idea called uh, the helper, the helped with scripts program. And it's like basically a team of scratchers that we're going to sort of recruit and we've, we've already sort of like recruited a core of them who will be like these helpers who go and have this identity and other people can mm -hmm. apply to join this group. And then there's like sort of like a, it, it's one way to sort of like filter out to make sure that the people who are helping, cause there are, because there is this excess of like everyone wants to help, but sometimes it's not, you know, like I might want to help, but I might not have like the right amount of experience with Scratch to actually help someone. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's sort of like both giving people that like identity, but then also, you know, a way to like bring people into the group in, in a, a way that. Mm -hmm. um, and do you think people who help other people also learn something in the process? Oh yeah, I, I definitely think so. I mean, I, I, that's been like, I, I say that based on like personal experience. Like when I've anything that I've done where I've gotten to a point where I can like teach someone else when I've gone through the process of like teaching someone else, it requires me to like sort of rethink about, or sort of like it, it requires you to step back and like think about that material and think about like how to explain it to someone else. And I think it requires like a really deep understanding mm -hmm. of like what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I know personally and like with other people I've spoken to, I feel like that's like a common thing. It's like when you, when you can explain it to someone else in a way that like, makes sense to them uh it really sort of like also helps solidify things mm -hmm. for you cool help us out help us out <laughs>